Thank you very much. And thanks for sticking through the long conference for the last session of the day. I really appreciate that. So as you all entered the room, I wanted um, for you to look at something somewhat engaging rather than the title of, of the session. And here, um, it's really to show the remarkable pace at which our industry is evolving and the industry of AI and AR is evolving. This is just a curation of my email inbox from the past two weeks. In fact, I added, I think, the TikTok one just on the plane uh, on Monday. So it's, it's advancing at an incredible pace. It can be difficult to keep, you know, keep on top of. And hopefully I'll share some great insights with you today on, on how you can incorporate this into the classroom and what some of the leading social media platforms are doing as well. Um, so today, uh, as, as mentioned, I am the author of Essentials of Social Media Marketing. It's reached its five-year anniversary now. I don't like to say it's five years old because it's not old. As you guys know, we update it every, uh, or I update it every year, and much of which I'll be presenting today is already in the textbook. So there is a new section on AI and AR and social media, so stay tuned for that for those of you that adopt the textbook. But before we begin, before I advance to the next slide, I actually want you all to close your eyes, if that's possible. <laughs> so close your eyes. I want, you to, I want your imagination to take you on a journey as you envision scrolling through your Instagram, your Facebook, your YouTube, or your favorite social media channel. And visualize yourself engrossed in captivating videos and other content accompanied by your favorite influencer. Can you picture what this influencer looks like? Maybe it's a sp particular person that you follow, that you enjoy following. Um, they, this inf influencer, as you may anticipate, shares in intriguing behind the scenes content, offers sneak peeks into their daily lives, tries on the latest fashion trends, attends glamorous events, and endorses various brands. And for many of you, it might be industry professionals that are sharing thought leadership content. Now, imagine if I were to reveal that this influencer you've come to adore is not a real person. What image forms in your mind? You can open your eyes now. <laughs> Anyone? Jen? Angry. What? <laughs> That's the influencer you pictured, yeah. Any others? Any other thoughts? Yeah, yeah, so I, I want to actually, um, well, I meant to share this screen as I was talking through that, but I want to introduce you to the world of virtual influencers. So these influencers are digital personalities that populate social media platforms today. They build audiences of passionate fans, just like human influencers, but they're not real. Instead, that there is a team of powerful and talented individuals behind them utilizing computer-generated imagery, motion capture, and marketing to breathe life into these digital avatars. Have you guys seen the movie Avatar recently and the types of technology that they're leveraging in the latest movies? So they're, they're using this to, to create virtual influencers that are infiltrating social media. And the, rest, the result, as you see here, this is Lil Michaela, um, is astonishingly realistic, right? It blurs the line be lines between what's real and what's not. And what's even more intriguing is the impact that these virtual influencers have on our lives. They share behind the scenes glimpses into their lives. They promote products and brands. They even co collaborate with companies as brand amb ambassadors. And the fascinating part is that audiences don't seem to mind. Generation Z, the audiences that you guys are, are teaching, they, they are used to this, right? They embrace this. They even seem them as more relatable than some of their human influencers that they follow, more relatable and more reliable. And so these influencers garner millions of social media followers who really eagerly engage with their content. And so here on the screen is Lil Michaela. I'm just gonna call her Michaela because I don't like saying Lil. Um, <laughs> um, but she has 3 million followers on Instagram, 3 million followers on TikTok. She's become a brand ambassador for luxury fashion and automotive companies. And her partnerships are so successful that she's even been signed by a major talent agency. Again, blurring the lines between real and virtual. And so now I'm gonna share a one to two minute video of Lil Michaela and some of the other virtual influencers. Let's see. 
you might have to hit play for me. Oh. No, go back. Can you hit play on the... Oh, it did? It's on, it's on YouTube. Okay, well, this is a fascinating video. If you Google Lil Michaela on CNN Business, it's about a four to five minute. I was going to cut it to the first uh, two minutes, but you can really see how real uh, Lil Michaela is and, and the impact that she's having on society. And so what makes these virtual influencers so appealing? Think about this from a marketer or a brand perspective, right? One of the reasons lies in their adaptability, right? They can transcend they can transcend cultures, different geographies, um, appeal to audiences worldwide from a budgeting perspective, right? You don't have to fly influencers or models to come endorse your brand. You can have it done all virtually. And these, the rise of virtual influencers is really challenging the notion of what's possible with this type, type of technology and what it means to form relationships online. And so as technology continues to evolve, we can expect further influ, uh, advances in the world of virtual influencers. And the reason I started my session with this captivating topic is because it's all driven by AI. It's all driven by computer-generated imagery, the future of technology. And so with natural language processing, image recognition, and speak recognition, AI influences are going to continue to emerge, capable of engaging with audiences in real time. And so here's Lil Michaela promoting PacSun as a brand endorsement. And the second one is her behind the scenes at a magazine cover shoot. <laughs> I wish you could have seen the video, but I'll, I'll, we'll try to share it with you afterwards. Jen? The dog? Yeah, so um, the people are real behind her. But she is not. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so in the video, it, it, it was from the owners of the platform. I forget the name of a company, but a company started it. Um, and they're the ones that are getting these massive brand deals and endorsements. Yeah, yeah, and so they're profiting from this. And there's been many other companies that are following suit. <laughs> Yeah, it's CGI, right? That uses AI, language processing, speak, speech recognition to communicate in real time, create videos. So follow her on Instagram if you have an Instagram. Um, but I encourage you to watch the video. If we have time, maybe I can pull it up quickly. Yeah? So she was advertising clothing. Yeah. Is that procedurally generated? The clothing on her, yes. So it's not like Yeah, it's all computer generated. So from a brand's point of view, uh, view PacSun, they don't have to do much, right? <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. <laughs> unless the unless she gets so intelligent that she goes rogue and and <laughs> we have a crazy robot on our hands. Um, but yeah, I mean, extremely realistic. And then again, the studies are showing that Generation Z, they're seeing them as more relatable than humans, um, which is also a scary fact. Um, but the, the point here is just to, to talk about this, the type of advancements that are, that are happening in the industry and happening on social media. And so um, I probably don't need to spend too much time describing this, but AI and AR, just to offer up the definition, so AI is the development of computer systems that can perform tasks that typically require human intelligence. So it involves the creation of algorithms and models that empowers these machines to learn, reason, and make decisions in real time based on data. Um, and, and it's not a new concept. Many of you have been engaging with AI not even knowing it. It's how Amazon and Netflix serve up personal content recommendations based on your interest, products you might like, videos that you might like. Social media algorithms, they all work the same. 
They deliver you personalized content based on what you engage with, the interests, and what, what, you, what they will think that you're, you will like. And so let's turn our attention to augmented reality. So AI is an interactive technology that overlays digital information, such as images and videos and 3D models onto the real world. And they blend the virtual elements with the physical environment. AI, AR enhances our perception and interaction with reality. So here's just a screenshot of Lil Michaela. I'll call her Michaela. Um, this is her latest Instagram. What I'm showing here on the screen, I forgot I have a, um, this is LinkedIn's campaign manager, and they just announced this, I think, the last few weeks. And you can, I don't know how well you can see this, but this is creating an ad in LinkedIn. And as you're creating the introductory text, the headline, it gives you suggestions based on AI built into the campaign manager platform on what your social media ad copy should be. And all of the leading social media platforms are leveraging this type of technology today. For AR, this is one of my favorite AR features for brands. This is virtual try-on, and you can see a pair of Nike shoes, and you can scroll through all the different pairs and see how it looks on you. And you can make a purchase directly in the app after trying on the virtual shoe, enabling social e-commerce or social commerce. And so, <clears throat> AR, AI and AR have really become a game changer in social media marketing. It revolutionizes the way that businesses engage with audiences. And by leveraging AI algorithms, marketers can really analyze vast amounts of information, gain insights into their target audiences, into their consumer behavior, their preferences and trends, and enables them to deliver tailored content to these audiences. Increasing, increasing the relevancy and engagement with them. And so um, how many of you have heard or taught right content, right place, right time? This is what AI can, can enable you to do on social media and many other platforms. And so AI-powered chatbots, for example, and virtual assistants. I think I attended a session earlier today. I don't know if I see her in the room, um, where she was talking about the, the time commitment from social media managers and the burnout responding to all of these inquiries. Think about the future of AI, which already exists today, where you don't actually have to have a physical human responding to customer inquiries on social media. Um, so AI-powered chatbots, virtual assist assistants, they provide personalized customer support. And then the AI algorithms themselves, they can optimize ad targeting, delivering the right content to the right person at the same right time. And this is actually what happens behind the scenes when you're targeting someone on Facebook or LinkedIn or doing your advertising campaigns without you knowing it. And so for AR, it's also transforming social media marketing. Um, actually, I'll, I'll quickly talk about these two images. So here was just me uh, entering into chat GPT, a social media post for speaking at ProfCon. And I said, give me two options for my social media pro, uh, post. I didn't take these exactly, but I altered them slightly. Um, and then what you see here is an H&M um, virtual assistant chat bot where it's asking them to you know, select different clothes and uh, engage with, with the app that way. And so AR and social media marketing, it's also transforming the landscape. It offers brands innovative ways to engage and interact and captivate their audiences. So um, think about creating immersive experiences using lenses and filters. Uh, Snapchat was actually one of the leading platforms that become, became an AR first driven platform. They were the ones that invested in it in the, mo in the most. And so you're probably familiar with all of the filters and lenses that exist on social media today, um, how users can transform their appearances, overlay interactive elements uh, into their surroundings. They can even play AR immersive games. And so Snapchat and now TikTok and some of the other leading platforms, uh, Instagram is closely following behind. They've really solidified their position as pioneering and empowering users to engage with augmented reality in more in exciting and meaningful ways. And so I have a Game of Thrones example. Does anyone watch Game of Thrones? <laughs> uh, this is an AR uh, filter that they created. And this is New York City where you could see the dragon you know, landing on the top of the building there. But you could have done it in any situation, right? I could have had the dragon land on you guys in the audience today. <laughs> um, and the second one is Fit Fab Fun. 
And this is uh, social commerce enabled AR where you can try on different sunglasses, try on different products and purchase them all directly within the app. And if you open Snap, and here, oh, so here you go, you can actually click and discover and purchase the products directly. So you can open up Snapchat at any given moment. My most exciting time is around the holidays. I love to see all the brands that are creating AR and AI uh, generated campaigns in, in some of these tools and use them as case studies in my textbook. So here are just some examples of AI integration in social media marketing. So AI powered writing tools. We heard from Christina about ChatGPT today, and that was a fantastic session. Um, but the social media platforms themselves, as you saw from the LinkedIn example, they're integrating AI directly within their platforms. So you can create content, um, optimize headlines, you know, test call to actions, all within the platform. Hoots, Hootsuite, I don't know if you have used that in your classes or you use it to manage for a business, but they created Owly. Um, Owly Writer, and it's a writing tool that instantly generates captions, posts, and ideas for your audience, um, and it saves you know time and, and effort. And then content curation and personalized feeds. So just like Netflix and Amazon, all of these leading social media platforms, they leverage AI algorithms to analyze user behavior and interests and preferences to drive personalized content recommendations. So if you use Instagram, the Explore feed, TikTok for you page, all of these are delivering the, the content that they think that you'll engage with the most based on your interactions. And so Domino's is, is an example that used AI uh, to create personalized advertisements for its target audience uh, in specific locations with specific promotions. In doing so, they increased their sales by 6% and a 13 in increase in customer satisfaction. And there's dozens and dozens of case studies like this. AI-powered chatbots. How many of you have engaged with a chatbot before? Yeah. Um, so they can be really beneficial, right, to, to customers and also a pain at some point when you just want to speak to a human. But L'Oreal, they created an AI-powered chatbot for Facebook Messenger um, to, to find the perfect f perfume based on the user's interest and the type of person you were trying to find the gift for. So I think this was around the holidays. If your husband was trying to find a gift for you, they could enter in your type, your personality type, and it would find the per perfect perfume to match. Um, social selling, so LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Uh, they use AI to provide personal recommendations and insights to the sales representatives, enable them to create impactful messages, build stronger connections with their customers. Um, this one was really surprising to me. There's new tools that you can use with LinkedIn Sales Navigator and, and other external tools where you can actually paste in the LinkedIn profile of the person that you want to replicate and target and speak to, and they'll deliver content recommendations in that person tone in, 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 in a tone that mirrors their writing style. So imagine this from a sales point of view, right? You can speak to the customer the way that they speak. So really, really empowerful, uh, empowerful, empowering. And then sentiment analysis. I think I was speaking with um, somebody today about this, right? You can really use AI to analyze the conversations that are happening, um, track public opinion, identify trends. So you can also use this for demand generation. If you're a t-shirt manufacturer and you're looking for new slogans for your shirt, you can use AI to assess all of the conversations that are happening in the industry and pick out the best top selling slogans for your t-shirt. Um, just one example of how you, could, how you could use that for demand generation. Object recognition and segmentation. Um, so Snapchat, for example, they have AI algorithms that identify and tra track objects. So the virtual try-on experiences, um, you can even, they have a, a tool where you can scan, let's see, like the plant that you have maybe in your house and it will tell you more information about that plant. Um, so it's you could scan a product and it would do the same. Um, so that's AI for uh, object recognition. And then automated content recommendations. So this is how they remove fake accounts and, and bots and things like that. And they've been doing this for quite a, quite a while now. 
And then AI-powered job recommendations. How do you think LinkedIn delivers the personalized job recommendations that students or you might see come across your feed, right? It's based on your interests. It's based on your industry, where you li live. They deliver that all with AI. And then lastly, visual discovery. So um, Pinterest is a platform that's known for visual search and visual discovery. And so they use AI to analyze and tag all of their, um, their pins and images on Pinterest, ena enabling users to search for specific objects, styles, or themes within the platform. And so benefits, um, I don't know if I need to go into these too much in detail, um, but really it can streamline and improve marketing strategies, right? Um, it analyzes, the, one of the things I hate the most about marketing, and I tell everyone this, is I, I hate personally analyzing data. And imagine with AI, how I could really make my life a little bit more better, where I'm not having to physically analyze all the data myself, and, and AI can help streamline that for me. It saves time and resources. Um, when Christina was presenting, she was talking about um, the input for, for some of these AI algorithms. And I actually hired a writer on my team on Monday. The demand is still there. It, I ne we needed a messaging expert, but we've been doing this all along with the input. You've been, or many big companies have been hiring creative agencies, hiring writers, hiring content creators, and you have to give them that input. You have to give them the, you know, the storyline, the message, and the value prop. Um, but it can save time and resources if you use ChatGPT to prompt to get some of that information. Advanced audience, audience targeting, as we mentioned, the leading platforms are using this to deliver content to the right audiences that you want to target. Um, enhanced content creation, right? Imagine all the idea generation and um, different ways that you can use AI to create new content for your campaigns. Real-time social listening, so it monitors social media conversations, and there's been social media listening tools that have existed for a while now, um, but this AI has brought it to the next level. Customer experience, data-driven analytics, sentiment analysis, and competitive analysis as well. I know we're getting short on time, so I'm gonna go quicker. So considerations, right? You have to ensure that the data is accurate, right? Always fact check the data. There was an article I was reading the other day, there was a lawyer, I think in New York City, who used AI to bring, um, I don't know if you read it, I see a few nods, uh, I think cases that weren't real, right, to the courtroom, and I think he's losing his, his license over it. Um, so you need to ensure that the data that you're using is accurate, especially if you're representing a brand, um, a very public brand, bias, so AI is only as good as the information that it's collected, at, that it collects, and the data that it's trained on. So you do need to watch out for that bias and make sure that you're fact checking everything. And then privacy concerns, right, transparency, transparently communicating the data and, and practices that are used. I know this has been a challenge for leading social media platforms today about data collection and privacy. Lack of context that it can have and just human oversight, right? Overly relying on these tools. So um, really it, it does need human involvement. I would never go into the LinkedIn campaign manager and just let it create content for me without reviewing it. Okay, so now let's jump to AR. Um, some of this has been around for a few years now. So um, AR filters and lenses where brands can create these interactive and immersive experiences. Uh, users can enhance photos with videos and fun elements, and this really helps to increase awareness and engagement. Gamification and contests. So I don't know, there's, I wish I could have showed all of the brand case studies that are available, but there's so many brands that are creating branded hashtag challenges and contests and, and games and interactive experiences like scavenger hunts and immersive storytelling. You can hold your camera up today and enter into a virtual world um, that's all uh, driven by the brand, and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Virtual try-on is actually one of my favorite features for AR because it enables especially for B2C companies, um, you know, with social selling and social commerce, you can try on products and it will increase, like they don't have to leave their house, right? They can try on products, increase conversions, product visualization, Wayfair is an example of this where they enabled you to picture the furniture in your house to see if it would fit before you purchase it. 
I haven't done a study on this, but I'm sure it's uh, increased the, the return rate, right? Or decreased the return rate on a lot of their, their goods. World effects is where you um, overlay AR technology, such as filters or animations, into the real world. So that uh, Game of Thrones example I showed you is an example of that. There's object tracking and object scanning, where you can scan real-world objects on your device and overlay, um, overlay content on top of them. Um, social commerce. Let me see. Did I lose my screen here? Um, so enables enables users to make direct purchases with the AR filters directly within the app. And then storytelling. AR really helps brands with storytelling, right? They can add animated characters. I think um, I was speaking with Carrie Ann. I'm going to call on you for a second on our two and a half hour drive to Yellowstone. And she has a really innovative uh, company and product that she created for children. It's children's fitness videos with custom music. And we were talking about creating characters, AI characters that they can dance along with in TikTok or Snapchat um, to show them the moves. So just an example of um, you know big, large brands don't only benefit, but you know smaller organizations can as well. And then location-based AR, right? Uh, it's used to provide location information and content, displaying nearby, point, nearby points of interest, directions, or user-generated content tied to specific places. And then some of the benefits, right? Enhance user engagement. How often do brands get to spend you know, more than a minute with their customers these days. But if you create an engaging AR experience, they're captivated in your brand, they're engaged with your brand, you bring them into this virtual world to enhance user engagement. Amplified reach and awareness and loyalty, right? You can um, build brand loyalty, you create these memorable experiences for your customers, helping you stand out from competitors. Product visualization is a really good benefit for that. Um, and I just talked about the Wayfair example there, interactive advertising, data collection, storytelling, and brand narratives, and then it gives you a competitive advantage over other competitors. So I know we're running short on time. I'm going to skip the considerations for AIR and social media, but um, you can see them here on the screen because I want to get to one of the case studies. So this is Ben and Jerry's. Hopefully this one will work. They're not working? Okay. <clears throat> So um, I can send this to you after. There's a Ben and Jerry's example, and there's a Super Bowl 57 example. Um, but what Ben and Jerry's did, and for those of you who have adopted my textbook, this example is in the Snapchat chapter. Um, but they were celebrating the 30 years of the cookie dough flavor. And so they launched their first popsicle ice cream called the Cookie Dough Peace Pop. Um, and it was an ice cream for Generation Z. And what they did is they created an augmented reality experience to transport Snapchatters into this virtual festival world um, with music and dancing cows and a cookie dough peace pop that you could um, that you could pop for fun. And so it was bringing their users into this engaging festival experience world while also engaging with their product and promoting the product. And then the next one. Uh, was Super Bowl, and, and I'll send these to you, they're really engaging videos, but Super Bowl 57, and Snapchat created a 360 degree fan experience um, at State Farm Stadium. Fun fact, I've actually been to four Super Bowls, I'm a New England Patriot fan, uh, and they won three of the four I attended, but now they're not doing so well. Um, but this one was the Eagles facing off against the Chiefs. Um, and what'd you say? Yeah, yeah there you go. They were our rival for a while, though, so, um, and I'm a big fan of Pat Holmes. But, so anyway, so um, using AR, ver fans could virtually enter the stadium, they could watch pl uh, plays in real time, they could put their team's jersey over and overlay that on themselves, uh, they created a Bitmoji experience, they enabled e-commerce and shopping within the platform so they could purchase uh, some of the team's apparel. So this one was really a captivating use of AR for the Super Bowl, so I encourage you to watch it and we'll try to share out the links afterwards. Okay, so this was a um, really, as I was ta thinking about this in integration into the, the classroom, um, I came across this study, and it was a 2023 Sprout Social Study, 
and it outlines some of the challenges that business leaders and organizations are facing today. And interestingly enough, the top three challenges they're facing, insufficient training, limited organizational experience, and lack of understanding and resistance to change. And think about this as an opportunity for you as professors to start teaching the next uh, set of um, students that are about to enter the workforce that are already digitally savvy um, a true opportunity because brands are, are really in need of this and, and they're looking for the next generation to, to come in and take charge here. And so um, incorporating, incorporating, social, incorporating AR and AI in the classroom and you as educators, you really play a crucial role in preparing these students for the future. If you can incorporate these technologies into your teaching methodologies, professors can really empower students with the knowledge and the skills and the experiences that they need to excel in AI-driven marketing careers. And so some of the benefits for students, which we've discussed in former sessions, but enhanced learning, industry relevance, your future-proofing them, um, creative problem solving, these skills um, that are really enabled by AI and AR, and you're creating sought after skills for, for, professional, um, for professionals that are hiring in businesses. And so my three recommendations is really just to start to introduce them to the, con the concepts and applications of AI and AR and marketing and showcase how some of the leading brands are, are leveraging this. Encourage them to experience with these, to gain experience with these tools. So test prompts, content creation, using it for A-B testing, and then incorporate the tools and platforms into courseworks and other student projects. So you can create AR campaign for a brand, leverage interaction, interactive storytelling. And what I've done is I've created four assignments that Darlin in the back here, she's gonna email to all of you attending, because um, I know it's a lot to read, but there's two on AR and there's two on AI. The AR one is um, having students explore an AR shopping lens, right, and engage with the shop shopping lens, um, and then reflect on their experience with the lens. And then there's some enhancement suggestions as well. And then the other is um, a social media filter challenge, right, where they create their own social media filter for a brand. And then two for, um, this one is AI or AR, and it's kind of just creating an AI or AR social media marketing strategy for a brand. And then the second is exploring social media content creation with AI writing tools. So. Um, it goes through the five steps for them to start to use ChatGPT or some of the other social media AI writing tools. And again, we'll email this to you so you all have access to it. All right, we're at time, I think. All right, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it.